Hey, it's Andreas. And in this video, we're taking a look at Apache Pinot. Pinot is a real-time OLAP database built for super fast analytics. If you're working with large volumes of data and need answers in real time, Pinot is what you want. It originally came out of LinkedIn powering features like who viewed your profile, which needed to show up-to-date counts broken down by location, company or role, all with sub-second latency even under high user traffic. Today it's open source and used by companies like Uber, Stripe and Walmart. I'll actually cover a cool real world use case from Uber in an upcoming video. So if you're into that kind of deep dive, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Where Pino really stands out is in latency and concurrency. We have data latency, basically the time it takes between data creation and the time when the data is available to query. And there is query latency, how long it takes to get a response for a query. Concurrency is about how many queries can it handle at once, like when thousands of users explore metrics at the same time and nothing slows down. It's built from the ground up for real-time use cases, things like tracking clickstream activity, monitoring payments, or powering live dashboards. Since so much of that data flows through Kafka, Pinot plugs right into that and lets you query events within seconds of them happening at the source. Quick shout out to Startree here for sponsoring this video. They offer a managed cloud version of Pinot, so you don't have to worry about running the infrastructure yourself. All right, let's jump into how it all works. Let's walk through Pinot's architecture and more importantly, why it's set up this way. This diagram here gives you the full picture. Pinot is made up of different parts, each with a focused job. And that's what makes it scalable and fast for real-time use cases. Ingestion, querying, background jobs and cluster coordination are handled by different components that way each part can scale independently and stay responsive under load. Like I said in the introduction, Pinot was originally created at LinkedIn to solve very specific problems like the who viewed my profile feature. That meant showing up-to-date counts broken down by things like location, company and role and doing it with sub-second latency even under high traffic from around the world. At the time, traditional analytics databases couldn't ingest fast enough or support that level of concurrency. And while key value stores were fast, they couldn't handle aggregations across multiple dimensions. Pinot actually bridges that gap. It ingests data in real time, pre-aggregates efficiently and serves fresh insights instantly, even at a massive scale. And here's the real trick. A lot of systems can make queries fast if you're okay with stale data. You can build materialized views, re-index or pre-aggregate and that works but it comes at the cost of data latency. The hard part is doing both, keeping the data fresh and the queries fast. And that's what Pinot is built for. Over on the right, you've got the controller. This is the coordination layer in Pinot. It handles table creation, segment assignment, and overall system config. But just as important, it keeps the whole cluster in sync and balanced. Distributed systems need a reliable way to manage cluster state, like knowing which nodes are online, where data lives, and how to rebalance when things shift. Pinot uses a combination of Apache Helix and Zookeeper to handle that. Helix is responsible for segment assignment, server state tracking and ensuring things stay balanced across the cluster. Zookeeper supports the coordination process, storing cluster metadata, electing the active controller and monitoring node health. The setup is solid but it's not about the tech choices. The key thing is that Pinot has built-in cluster state management that works. That's what lets it scale reliably in production. At the top, you've got the broker. This is where queries enter the system, usually through a REST API. The broker acts as a smart coordinator. It figures out which servers hold the data relevant to the query, sends the right subqueries to just those servers gathers the partial results, 
merges them and returns the final response. Brokers are stateless, which makes them easy to scale. If you've got more users or more dashboards querying Pinot, just add more brokers. And because the broker sits in front of both real-time and offline servers, it can handle hybrid queries without you doing anything special. For example, a query over the last 30 days could pull fresh events from real-time servers and historical data from offline servers. Pinot stitches it together behind the scenes. And in the middle, you've got the two types of servers. Real-time servers handling streaming ingestion from Kafka or similar sources. As data flows in, Pinot makes it queryable immediately even before segments are finalized. That's how you get true real-time performance. Offline servers handle batch-loaded data, like Parquet or CSV files sitting in S3, GCS or Azure. These are pulled into Pinot using ingestion jobs, converted into segments and then served just like real-time data. Offline data here just means it didn't arrive via a stream. Think nightly sales reports or scheduled ETL jobs. Pinot ingests, indexes and serves that data right alongside your live events. Because the server types are specialized, Pinot can optimize each path separately. Ingestion and storage stay fast and the broker unifies it all at query time. Everything in Pinot real time or batch ends up in a segment. A segment is a small indexed columnar data file. It's Pinot's core unit of storage and query execution. Pinot generates segments in two ways. In the real time path, segments are built continuously from Kafka data. Pinot buffers and processes events, builds segments in the background, and meanwhile serves incoming data through the real time consuming layer. So you can query it right away. In the batch part, a job pulls data from something like S3 or BigQuery, converts it into segments and loads it into offline servers. Once segments are ready, they're distributed across the cluster and indexed for fast access. Pinot's format supports aggressive pruning, multiple index types and efficient scan performance. Also, it doesn't rely on a central data lake. Each segment lives locally on the server it's assigned to, so queries stay fast and predictable. Now that we covered how Pinot is structured. Let's walk through how data flows through the system from ingestion to query execution. For real-time analytics, Pinot integrates directly with streaming platforms like Kafka, Kinesis or PubSub. Here's the flow. Pinot real-time servers subscribe to Kafka topics. Events are held in memory, processed row by row and are immediately available for querying via the consumption layer. In parallel, Pinot builds segments in the background, eventually sealing and indexing them for a long-term storage. Again, queries don't wait for that step. The data is live and queryable from the moment it lands. That's how Pinot achieves true real-time freshness. Under the hood, Pinot handles offset tracking, back pressure, failure recovery and more, so ingestion is reliable at scale. Pinot also supports batch ingestion for historical data or scheduled backfills. Typically data is pulled from cloud storage like S3, Google Cloud Storage or Azure Data Lake in formats like Parquet, Afro or CSV. A job pulls data from something like S3 or BigQuery, converts it into segments and loads it into offline servers. These ingestion jobs are usually run by external tools like Spark, Airflow or custom scripts which prepare and transform the data. Here are some examples. A Spark shop that aggregates user events nightly, transforms it and pushes it to Pinot once a day. Once uploaded, the segments are assigned to offline servers, indexed and immediately available for queries. Physically, segments are stored on the local disks of the servers by default. If you're using StarTree, you can also take advantage of tiered storage, which lets you offload older segments to shared cloud storage. That way, you can keep recent data hot and historical data cost efficient without giving up on performance. One of the things that really sets Pinot apart from other OLAP systems is support for upserts. The ability 
to update or replace records based on primary key. This is especially useful in scenarios where data evolves over time. Instead of just appending every new version of a record, Pinot lets you maintain only the latest version, which is often what your application or dashboard actually needs. It does this by maintaining a primary key index and tracking the most recent row during ingestion. So if an updated record comes in, Pinot replaces the older one on the fly. Most analytical databases aren't built for this. They assume the data is final and immutable. Pinot handles updates as part of the real-time ingestion process, giving you fresher, more accurate results even in fast-moving user-facing environments. Now that we've gone through the architecture and how data moves through Pinot, let's talk about what actually makes it so powerful for real-time analytics. At the core, Pinot stores all data in a columnar format, and that decision drives a lot of performance gains. It means Pinot only reads the columns your query needs. It reduces disk I.O., it allows for efficient compression and encoding, and it speeds up aggregations, filters, and projections. This layout is a great fit for analytics, especially when working with large datasets and wide tables. On top of that, Pinot offers a powerful feature called star tree indexing. This is a pre-aggregation strategy. Pinot pre-computes partial aggregates across common combinations of dimensions and metrics. So when a query runs, it doesn't need to scan and group everything from scratch. It's especially effective for dashboards with a lot of group by and filter combos. Top end queries, high cardinality aggregations. If you've got a dashboard that's refreshing, every few seconds, star tree can take a heavy query and return it in milliseconds. Now, you don't need to learn anything new to use Pinot. It supports standard SQL, including group buys, filters, joins, and aggregations, window functions as well. Real-time queries on both streaming and batch data. That makes it easy to plug Pinot into your existing stack, whether it's a BI tool, a metrics API, or just ad hoc analysis. Beyond StarTree, Pinot gives you a variety of index types to help you optimize for different kinds of queries. You can use inverted indexes for fast filtering, sorted indexes for range queries and top K operations, range indexes for numerical comparisons, Bloom filters, text indexes, H3 for geospatial data types, and JSON indexes for more specialized needs. StarTree gives you flexible purpose-built indexes that can be applied during ingestion. So every record is indexed upfront, not just after performance starts to degrade. And when your query patterns change, you can add new indexes on the fly without any downtime, unlike other systems that require heavy re-indexing or then scheduled maintenance. All of this adds up to lower query latency, often under 100 milliseconds, even with large databases. Thanks to its distributed stateless architecture, it can handle thousands of queries per second across many users, dashboards, or tenants. Brokers and servers scale independently. Everything runs in parallel. All right, that's it for this intro to Apache Pinot. I think this gives you a good feel for how it's structured and why it's such a solid choice for real-time analytics. If you found this helpful, hit the like button and leave a comment or question. I read all of them. And if you're curious about how companies like Uber are using Pinot in production, make sure to subscribe because I've got a separate video on that coming up. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.